Hey everybody. Um, let's go ahead and get started on module four. Um, we have finished module three and module four is cell structure and function. And I'll share my screen here. You have a new Bible verse for this one for module four, which is Hebrews 11, three, which says by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. Hebrews 11, three. Let's say our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, the time off and the, the time that we were able to do, focus on a few other things besides school. And we thank you for the fall weather. And I just pray that this class is clearly communicated and gives you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, extra credit field trip on Friday. If you'd like to go to my, Mar Martin Microscopes on Friday, I will be giving extra credit for that, so let me know if you wanna go. And then if you do not bring your national park brochure of uh, two Wednesdays ago, then bring it this Wednesday to turn in. And here's module four. Module four is cell structure and function. And you're gonna learn the history of the cell, cell structures, cell membranes, and how things move through the membrane. This module is extremely, um, heavy on definitions so I want you to actually get your book I have I have the book here and we're going to go through the first half of it together um, because it is intense with terms uh, new terms so be sure you're making your flashcards and then I'm going to show, point out some things that you need to draw and turn in um, for credit so the history of the, of the cell is on page 138. And if you look at page 138, you'll see that in 1595, um, that the first microscope was invented. And then 50 something years later, 60 years later, 1655, Robert Hooke observes cork cells of a tree through a primitive microscope. And that picture in your book the black and white picture there is actually a picture that uh, Robert Hooke drew in his book about um, microscopic things. And if you look up at the top of page 139, figure 4.2, you'll see that this is a sketch he made in that same book of his setup with his microscope and his light illuminating the cells of the cork. Um, Leeuwen Hook observes protozoa, we talked about him when we talked about um, spontaneous generation and stuff coming from nothing, uh, where he observed the pond water. So that was in 1674. And then he observes bacteria in 1683. And then as you progress, you'll see that um, Robert Brown discovers the nucleus and plant cells in 1833. And then we get the three parts of the cell theory. Now, if you'll turn the page to page 140, you'll see that there is a cell theory that um, the final piece came together in 1855, and it has three parts, and you need to memorize these parts. So make a flashcard of this um, cell theory. Put cell theory on one side and then write the three points on the back side. The first one is that all living organisms are composed of cells. They may be unicellular or multicellular. Number two, the cell is the basic unit of structure and function in living organisms. And number three, cells arise from existing cells. So if you turn back to page 139, you'll see that all of that came together in 1838, that all plants are made up of cells. Then in 1839, that um, all animal tissue are made up of cells. And then in 1855, that all cells come from existing cells. And if you go to the microscope um, field trip on Friday, you'll get to learn more about the higher powered microscopes that we have today. All right, so the characteristics of the cell. If you look on page 141, you'll see that there are 12 different functions um, which support and maintain life that are functions of the cell. 
ingestion, digestion, respiration, transport, homeostasis, synthesis, secretion, excretion, digestion, ir irritability, movement, and reproduction. So all of these have to be performed, uh, well, different cells have different functions, um, but a single-celled organism, when it's just one cell, sometimes you'll, the book talks about, sometimes people call that a simple life form, but really it's not simple because one thing has to perform all of those functions. So it's actually pretty complicated when you just have one cell that has to perform all of those different functions. And we're not gonna study all of these functions in this module. Um, so it, this is just a list to show you all the different functions that cells do carry out in life living organisms. But what we are gonna focus on are the different organelles. If you turn to page 142, you'll see that all living things are composed of cells, but you should know that not all cells are alike. Cells come in many shapes and sizes, but to live, cells must perform certain functions. As two of the criteria for life, living things must have an energy conversion mechanism as well as a reproductive capacity. We learned that in um, the earlier module. So all cells contain smaller structures that have specific jobs to do. And we call these little organs, we call them organelles. And you'll see the definition there. It's a tiny cellular structure that carries out a specific functionary function necessary for the cell to survive. Cells come in two basic types, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells have no nucleus or other distinct membrane bound organelles. Look at the picture um, and then eukaryotic cells, they do have membrane bound nucleus and other distinct membrane bound organelles. So if you look at the, the picture in figure 4.3, you'll see that there's four dots, four black circles. Those are the nuclei of four cells from someone's cheek inside of their mouth. And then all of those little dots that are on top of those four cells, those are prokaryotic cells, those are bacteria that are on top of the eukaryotic uh, cheek cells. So let's say this again. Those little tiny ones, those are prokaryotic. They have no membrane bound organelles. The larger ones that have the black dot and the purplish dot in the middle, those are eukaryotic cells and they do have membrane bound organelles. So if you look at the bottom of page 143, let's talk about the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, all cells share plasma membrane, cytoplasm, and ribosomes, and they all contain DNA. So let's look at where they are in each one. On the left is a prokaryotic cell. You can see that there's just stuff inside of there. They're not little neat compartments or different structures that have different uh, distinct shapes. It's just um, the cytoplasm inside of the cell there is the blue fluid. The DNA is there in the red bunched up uh, formation similar uh, to just like when we made the, pro the DNA with the pipe cleaners and the paper clips. That's just a bunch of DNA there. Then we have the plasma membrane around the outside of the prokaryotic cell. And then we have ribosomes in there that are circles. But if you look over here on the right, the eukaryotic cell, the DNA is in the nucleus. The cytoplasm is the same, the, the filling, the, the liquid inside of the cell. The plasma membranes around the outside and then the ribosomes are those dots that are inside of the cell. So those are the things that prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have in common. That is the first thing that you'll draw. You will draw figure 4.5 into your notes. Okay, so that's your first thing that you'll draw into your notes. Let's go through all of the um, parts of the cell. So the plasma membrane. Um, it's the cell membrane, that's the same thing. The plasma membrane, the cell membrane, those are um, interchangeable words. It is a phospholipid 
uh, like we taught, like we made with our pipe cleaners and our paper clips and our beads, we made those phospholipids. Um, that's what the plasma membrane is made of, and it separates the cell from the surroundings. So it is a sim the definition here for your flashcard is the semi-permeable membrane between the cell contents and the cells surrounding. Um, this allows certain things to pass through and enter the cell, but does not allow other things like toxins, for example, to go in and out of the cell. It does allow water and waste products to leave the cell, um, but does not allow the necessary contents like the nucleus to leave the cell. So it is the semi-permeable membrane where things go in and out of the cell through the plasma membrane. The cytoplasm is that jelly-like fluid inside the cell in which the organelles are suspended. It's about 70 to 80 percent water, plus other um, compounds like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. There are also charged atoms called ions in the cytoplasm that helps with transport of certain things across certain areas of the cell. Uh, it uses electrical charges to stimulate things to move within the cell. Um, let's see, cytoplasmic streaming, the motion of cytoplasm in a cell that results in a coordinated movement of the cell's contents. So if, if the cell wants something to move from one area to another, it can use those electrical charges to push and pull, attract and repel that part from one area of the cell to another. The ribosomes are the non-membrane bound organelles responsible for protein synthesis. Um, you'll remember that in module one, that all living beings must be able to obtain and convert energy in the process called metabolism. And so they either do this by breaking down large molecules or synthesizing them. And the ribosomes are where they synthesize the proteins. All right, the next thing that you'll draw in your notes is figure 4.6. You'll do the plant cell and the animal cell. These are both eukaryotic cells. And let's go through um, some parts of the plant cell. One thing the plant cell has that the animal cell does not is a cell wall, which is the yellow thicker piece around the outside of the plant cell. It is a rigid structure on the outside of certain cells, usually plant and bacteria cells. Um, let's see. Then we'll move on to the nucleus. The nucleus is um, the highly porous membrane that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. It's just a membrane around the nucleus. And the chromatin, those are the long strands of, or clusters of DNA and proteins or RNA and protein in the nucleus of the cell. So if you see there, you'll see the chromatin inside the blue nucleus. They're like purple little lines in there. Uh, inside of that area for the chromatin. Um, the endoplasmic reticulum is the organelle composed of an extensive network of folded membranes that perform several tasks within the cell. So if you look at figure 4.7, you'll see these folded. You have the rough ER, which is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the smooth ER, which is the um, SER, the um, smooth ER on the outside there. You'll see that there's ribosomes attached to the rough ER and then there's no ribosomes attached to the smooth ER. And just let me let me calm your nerves and tell you that what we're focusing on here is memorization. We just need to memorize all of these words. The test will just be, can you point to what it is? Can you name it? And can you tell me what it does? Next Wednesday, which is in three days, I'm gonna set up some labs and we'll talk more about what these do and how they work and a little bit of more connecting it to things we might already know or that we've seen. But for today, today's lesson, is simply memorize, be able to identify where they're located, and be able to tell me what it does, okay? So we're down here at the um, endoplasmic reticulum. 
Uh, and then it, it defines the rough ER, the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum is ER that is dotted with ribosomes. And then the smooth ER, which is the ER that has no ribosomes. And remember that ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis. Uh, the Golgi apparatus is the organelle where the proteins and lipids are stored and then modified to suit the cell's needs. And you'll see it there in purple. Vacuoles are large membrane bound organelle used for storage of food, water, or waste. Um, vesicles are smaller membrane bound organelle used mainly for transport of food, waste, or products synthesized for secretion. And it tells you there in your book the main difference is the size between those. Um, this, the central vacuole is a large vacuole that re rests at the center of most plant cells and is filled with water. So let's go back to page, okay, 145. So you'll see there's, in the plant cell, you'll see it's a large, clear looking area inside the center of the of the new of the cell where the vacuole is and then you'll see a vesicle is purple these little purple pieces that are inside of the cell the vesicles are purple on the animal cell as well on the right hand side near the bottom okay Okay, um, lysosomes, the organelle in animal cells responsible for hydrolysis reactions that break down proteins, carbohydrates, which remember are polysaccharides and uh, disaccharides, and some lipids, which are our fats. So let's look for our lysosomes on our, if you look on the um, animal cell, it's the bottom left, lysosomes, they're little purple dots. The large folded purple is your Golgi apparatus. Okay. Then you have your rough ER around the nucleus, your smooth ER past the rough ER, the chromatin inside the nucleus, the nucleolus is the center of the nucleus. The nucleus itself is the whole piece. It has a nuclear membrane around it, um, as do all organelles have a membrane and there is a nuclear pores, just pores on the outside of the nucleus. Okay. Um, the mitochondrion, double membrane bound organelles in which nutrients are converted to energy. These look like a bean. So if you look back on page 145, you'll see that it's the fourth down on the right on the animal um, cell and it is on the left next to the bottom on the plant cell, okay? And this is where they convert energy. Okay, um, chloroplasts, uh, these, these are contain the green pigment chlorophyll in, used in photosynthesis and chromoplasts contain yellow, orange, and red pigments used in photosynthesis. Uh, and you'll see these on your, in your plant cells. So if you look back at page 145, you'll see the cytoplasm are these green pieces there. Uh, with your chloroplasts inside. Your plastids, your chromoplasts, your leukoplasts, they're all there. Um, but I don't think they separate those out in the picture. It's in your diagram, it's just the green circles with the discs inside that you'll be identifying. And you would identify that as cytoplasm. Um, the cytoskeleton is a network of fibers that holds the cell together and helps the cell to keep its shape and aids in movement. Um, it can be three different types of fibers, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. And figure 411 shows you how this works. So you have microtubules there, those, that long tube. You have microfilament that just looks like long strings. Um, 
and I don't think they have, oh, intermediate filament, yes, it's just smaller than the microtubular. And you have your definitions there. Um, and those are for movement and support. Your centrioles are uh, organelles found in animal cells. They are paired organelles positioned at a right angle to one another that organize fibers required for cell division. And they're found in animal cells. So if you look back at page 145, you'll see that they are on the left, right outside of the rough ER. You'll see they're at a right angle to one another. And we'll learn more about those when we do mitosis and meiosis soon. Uh, the centrosome is small region near the nucleus that is the main organizing site for microtubules. In animal cells, it contains the two centrioles. Again, we're lining up for uh, cell division here um, that we'll learn more about when we cover uh, mitosis. And I don't think that they have those on. You're only responsible for what they have labeled on page 145, and they do have those. They point to those on um, in the animal cell there, right at the end of the um, well, do they? No, it's just the centrioles. So you just have to be able to do that. Okay, so on page 154, um, this is kind of what I would turn into flashcards if I were you. I would have cell wall on one side, the definition on the other, then some kind of picture to help me know where to identify it. And then I would list, is it prokaryote in the prokaryotic cell? Is it in an animal cell or is it in a plant cell or is it in all none, one or the other? The answers for these are on page 174 and 170, 173. So you, you, you have all the answers to make your flashcards correct. So again, I would do your flashcard where you have cell wall, then you have the definition on the back, a picture with it pointing to the cell wall, a little sketch. And then I would have it's prokaryotic, check, eukaryotic, animal, no, plant, yes. So that you have all of this information on your flashcards and that you start studying. Because Wednesday will be our last day in unit, in module four. I'll finish with one more lecture um, about moving across the membrane. Uh, after we do our labs on Wednesday, I'll do one video on membrane movement, and then you'll have your test. So this is a quick module. So to review, you have for homework, copy and upload figure 4.5 on page 143, copy and upload figure 4.6 on page 145. Make all of your flashcards the way that I've suggested using the information on page 173 and 174 and include a picture on each of the flashcards for the parts of the cell, okay? Again, on Wednesday when I see you, we'll do labs about cell structure and movement, membrane movement. I'll do one video lecture about membrane movement. Then we'll have our test next week on module four, okay? So keep up with your other homework, which is um, your on your own and your study guide questions as you go through. Okay. Message me if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you guys on Wednesday. Okay.